afternoon, and thank you for joining us at Quiver River Electric's 80th annual meeting. Uh, if you would, please stand and join the board in stating the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. My name is Diane Solly, and I'm president of your cooperative's board of directors. It's my honor and privilege to be here today serving you and Quiver River in that capacity. We want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. I have been notified that there, we have a quorum of members that has been established, and I now declare the meeting open for all business that may be presented today. Do that gently. Um, <laughs> The first item on the agenda is proof of mailing of the annual meeting notice, which will be presented by our secretary treasurer, Ted House. Thank you, Diane. Good afternoon, everybody. It is my duty as secretary of the Quiver River Board of Directors pursuant to the bylaws of the corporation to report that I have in my possession form 3541 from the United States Postal Service which certifies that the official notice of this Quiver River Electric Cooperative annual meeting was mailed to 60,686 addresses comprising all of the members of Quiver River from the United States Post Office in Jefferson City, Missouri on August 1st, 2022. Very good. Thank you, Ted. At this time, I'd like to introduce your cooperative's current board of directors. Uh, from Lincoln County, we have Mike Cherry, Jeff Geisendorfer, and Mick Burkemper. The directors from St. Charles County are Mark Schulte, uh, myself, Diane Solly, Dale Anderson, Denise O'Mara, and Ted House. From uh, Warren County, we have Dan Elliott, Steve Coffey, and Phil Dunk, and the director from Pike County is Walt Gregory. Thank you guys so much for your uh, commitment and your time and effort. We appreciate it. At this time, we would like Sean Batagler, our attending attorney, to step to the podium to conduct a very important part of our meeting, the election of your board of directors. Thank you. <clears throat> the... the uh, the following slate of candidates has been approved from St. Charles District 2, William Book, Scott Nichols, Diane Solly, and Marianne Harden. In Lincoln County District 2, <coughs> Jeff Geisendorfer and David Lightman. In Warren County, District 1, Dan Elliott and Jeff Culbertson. And in Pike County, Walt Gregory and Lori Smith. At this time, if there are any uh, ballots that have not been cast, they should be. And I don't see anyone doing so. So I'm going to assume everyone has cast their ballot that wants to. So. At this time, I will declare that the balloting is closed. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the 2021 annual meeting minutes. A copy of the minutes was printed on the, uh, on the website and in your handout today. Uh, do you wish to have the minutes read or shall we dispense with the reading? All right. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. All in favor, uh, vote by saying yes. yes. Any opposed, no. Minutes will stand approved as written. This brings us to the presentation of the financial report. Again, a copy of the audited financial report was posted on the website and is printed in your handout. The annual report was also included in the August issue of the Rural Missouri, which was mailed to you. Our, tre our secretary treasurer, Ted House, can read it. Or if not, do I hear a motion to dispense with the reading of the financial report? No, sir. All right, do I have a second? second? All right, I have a motion and a second to dispense with the reading of the financial report. All in favor, vote by saying yes. Yes. Those opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you. This time I'd like to call on Doug Tracy to give his CEO president's remarks. Doug? 
Actually, I think I'll sit down for now. <laughs> Might be a long stand. Thank you, Diane. And uh, thank you all for being here. As Diane said, this is our 80th annual meeting. We turned 80 last year, and this is the 80th annual meeting. So we appreciate uh, you all being here today. Um, as I get started, I just want to, I got several people I just want to thank. And um, first of all, if you're a veteran, I would like to thank you for your service. And if you're in the room and a veteran, why don't you stand up, let us recognize you for, uh, for what you've done for our country. Thank you all very much. So I'll give them a round of applause. Thank you for your service. Also, I'd like to thank any first responders um, or healthcare workers. It's been a, a crazy couple of years for all of you. So if you're a first responder or a healthcare worker, thank you um, online. And anybody here, let's stand up. I know we got at least one you need to stand up. So let's, let's recognize them as, as well. So thank you very much for that. I also want to thank the, uh, the board of directors um, for their services past year and the, the leadership that they provide. For, uh, for this cooperative and uh, the governance and the guidance that, that, that they give us and that they give me. Just appreciate you all so much for that. I want to thank the candidates for your interest in uh, running for the board. That means a lot to us. It's what makes us a cooperative. It's what uh, makes us different. You're going to hear me say the word different a lot um, here in the next few minutes. But thank you all for, uh, for taking time and showing interest in running for uh, your cooperative's board of directors. And last but not least, they all just left, so they're not going to hear this, but I wanted to uh, uh, recognize our nominating committee, who really is, uh, serve as our election officials. They take care of all that for us, and uh, they dedicate a lot of time and effort into that. So just so everybody knows, I wanted to read their names and thank them. From Lincoln County, we have Dale McDonald and Brian Edwards. From St. Charles County, we have Wendell Massman and Doug Steinmeier. From Warren County, we have Gary Carter and John Norwald. And from Pike County, we have Mark Harvey and Scott Clocky. So let's just take a minute and give them a round of applause for, for what they've done to help with, uh, with this year's election. And I want to say hello to the employees. We have some here in the room with us. And I want to say hi to the employees that are watching. We've got this piped through uh, both of our uh, offices. So thank you, employees, for, uh, for participating in this as well. So again, this is our 80th um, annual meeting. So it's, it's nice to, uh, to be able to, to uh, look back and see how we're doing. And what I want to talk about a little bit today is Quiver River and the Cooperative Difference. The cooperative Difference gets talked about quite a bit. There's even kind of like a national campaign that kind of shows what makes a co-op different. And most of the time, that shows that it's based on our, our corporate structure, um, how we're not owned by um, stockholders, how we're not for profit, and all that is well and good. But what I want to talk a little bit about today is not only just a cooperative difference, but the Quiver River difference. Because what Quiver River strives to do is we try to be different as a electric utility. We want to stand out. We don't want to look like everybody else. We want to be different. And when you hear the words Quiver River, we want people to think they are different and they know what they're doing, they know how to do things, and we're proud to be a part of that. So a little bit about what makes us different. First of all is just our demographics. So. In case you know, in case you didn't know, we are now in the top 10% of cooperatives as far as consumers served. You can see from the graphic that uh, we are just under, this was as of last um, December in 21, we're just under 70,000 consumers served. The average for cooperatives is 15. So we're four and a half times larger than most co-ops. So our little co-op has grown up. So we are, we're big and um, we like that. That's just more people that we can show the, uh, the Quiver di River difference, too. good as far as um, a few years ago we had 2020 we had a global pandemic 21 we had a polar vortex 
This year we're dealing with inflation, supply chain shortages, labor shortages, so there's good different and there's bad different. And uh, we want to concentrate as much as we can on the good different today. But you can see one of the issues that we're dealing with, as you all are, is inflation. You can see from this graph what inflation has done the past several months. Your co-op, Quiver River, is not immune to inflation. Um, things like equipment, materials, supplies, fuel, all of these costs are going up. And some actual costs have gone up by over 600 percent just in the last year and a half to two years. So we are also feeling that. And as part of that, we had our first rate increase in over six years earlier this year. And you say, well, how are you different then if all the other prices are going up and your prices went up as well? Well, the way that we are different is we analyze things as much as we possibly can and keep those as low as we can. You can see from this, our average user, which is about 1,400 kilowatt hours a month, um, their bill went up an average of about $3.60. Our costs have gone up much, much greater than this percentage, which comes out to about three and a quarter percent. But we work very, very hard to pass as little on of the rate increases as what we, than what we need. So we work hard to keep these rates as low as possible because we think of you, the member. We're not out trying to, to increase our profits for stockholders. Um, we're not a for-profit company, and we take this very, very seriously as far as trying to keep the electric rates down as far as we possibly can. Now, I must tell you, when we're talking about inflation and cost increases, the pressures aren't over. And in fact, they're actually getting worse. So there is a very good chance that in the next few months and years, you're going to see your rates going up more um, and with the, uh, the increased costs that, that we are um, seeing. So we're ex experiencing significant uh, increases in power cost, and that is a big deal when you're a power company. 65 to 70 percent of our cost are power cost. And so when that bill goes up, um, it, it increases the cost for uh, the cooperative. Now what you must know is the amounts that we can control that last 30 to 35 percent we work extremely, extremely hard. You can see on this graph that Quiver River, the blue line there, is 31% lower than the national average on controlling those controllable costs. So we're going to continue to work on that as much as we possibly can. When it comes to writing checks, we try to, uh, to keep those in control as much as we can, as much as we can do it. Now, there are some checks that we do enjoy writing. And those checks are capital credit checks to you, the members. And just within the past few weeks, uh, members have seen those capital credit checks hit their, hit their mailboxes. The board approved for 2022 another $7 million of retirement that the cooperative Quiver River has given back to you. This makes us different. As you can see, since uh, just in the last six years, we've hit the $40 million mark in the last six years. And since 1976, we're at $125 million that we've given back to our members. So when you compare that to the national average, you can see that we are very different and we are very aggressive in giving your capital back to you. So we're well above the national average, as you can see from this gra graph. And in fact, we're in the top 8% in the country for retiring capital credits back to you. So, so not all checks that we write are bad. We enjoy writing those. So what does all this mean? It means that you, the members, are also telling us that you like Quiver River being different. You like the Quiver difference. Earlier this year, we had our triannual survey, and you all uh, um, awarded us an 89 um, ACSI score. So you may say, well, what in the world does an 89 mean? Is that good, or, or what is that? This is how it compares to other forms of electric utilities as well as other electric cooperatives. We are a full 16 points above other electric cooperatives in the country. And you can see from uh, also even more with IOUs and municipals. So 16 points higher is what our score was that you gave us for our member satisfaction. 16 points higher than other cooperatives in the country. And this is one of the highest scores in the region, and we're very, very proud of that. So thank you to you, the members, for awarding us that. And we take great pride in that, and we're going to work hard to keep that number up there. Another way that we are different 
is through a program that most of you are familiar with, with our Operation Roundup. This is a program that you, the members, give your pennies, rounding up those, those bills to pennies that give back to individuals and charities around our service area that are in need. So we have had a, a our trust board works very, very hard at managing these funds and they distribute these back out. And we had a couple of milestones here just in the last um, year that I wanted to show you. One is that we had a record amount, $85,500, that went back to, you remember, with the scholarships um, that we gave back to young people in the form of scholarships. This was a record amount, so we're very proud of that. And a big milestone that we crossed just earlier this year was since the inception of this program in 97, we're at 25th year now, $7 million has gone back to the community just from those pennies rounding up. So you know what I had to do? I had to figure out, okay, first of all, how many pennies is $7 million? So I had to, I had to think through that a little bit. I've, it's been a while since I had an accounting class, so I had to go through that. So 700 million pennies is what that takes. So then I had to figure out, well, if you stacked every one of those on top of each other, how high would that be? So I checked on the internet, because you know everything on the internet is, is true. <laughs> So at least Abraham Lincoln said so. So I said, how, how far would that go up if we stacked 700 million pennies on top of each other and it would go 35,000 feet? So basically, when you're flying an airplane, that's how far those pennies would be. So what an amazing program this is. What an amazing job you, the members, have done in contributing to that. And it's just um, something, again, that, that makes us different. And we're very, very proud to be able to do that. So thank you for that. One of the biggest things that makes us different as far as an uh, electric utility company is our fantastic employees, and I know a lot of them are watching. And I cannot express enough um, how great our employees are and how dedicated they are. They are different. Some of them are more different than others, and that's a whole other different story. <laughs> but um, we really do have just some incredible employees that work tirelessly to keep your lights on, to, to ask, answer your billing questions, to set up your services. They really take this as, um, as it's an important part of service to you, the members. So I'm just so thankful for them. But that's not all that our employees do. Just this year, uh, we have our Quiver Cares program. Just within this year, our employees have had different fundraisers throughout the year. And each month, they give back to a specific charity that the employees pick. Just so far this year, and we're only in August, employees have raised over $5,000 on fundraisers to give back to the community. Because we all live here, our families live here, we're part of the communities. Again, it's what makes us different and we're very, very proud to be able to do that and to help our communities out. Pretty soon we're gonna be getting back into doing service projects as well with our Quiver Cares program, so we're excited about that as well. You may have seen this on social media here just two weeks ago. I wanted to say a little bit about our linemen. Our linemen do an absolutely amazing job. They are professionals in every aspect of the word, and their job is not easy. Their job is dangerous. Um, we all kind of think about them working on high voltage and how dangerous that is. Sometimes we don't think about the conditions that they're in while they're doing that. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had two of our linemen driving down the road in a storm, restoring power when a tree fell at exactly the time that they were driving under and that tree fell, hit the truck. Thankfully, both of our linemen were uninjured and walked away from this. They were a little bit scared when they didn't know what hit the, uh, the top of the truck all of a sudden, but thankfully they were, were uninjured. But it's just a reminder of the dangers that our linemen face um, every day to keep your lights on, and we just have a tremendous amount of respect for their knowledge and professionalism in the way you serve, the way that they serve you. So when you see our guys out there working hard, um, you know, nobody likes their power being off. These guys don't like it being off either. They're away from their families. They're out working hard trying to get this done. So encourage them when you see them. Same thing with the office. When you call in, um, they're working hard as well to get you as restored as, as uh, soon as we can. So in closing, I hope I've shown you some differences that uh, Quiver, makes Quiver River different than the uh, average electric utility. And as I close, I wanted to show our vision statement because I believe it puts into words what we're trying to do as we look at the future. 
And you'll notice in this vision statement, nowhere does it say that we're perfect. We're not. We never will be. No company is. But we're continuing to strive to get better and better. And our vision statement states that Quiver River will aspire to be a trusted energy partner that is prepared to embrace opportunities in a changing utility industry while providing our members maximum value and improving our communities. So this really shows what we're about. It shows what drives us. It shows what we pursue every single day. And we will continue to do this every single day as we go into the future. And this vision statement does drive us. So again, I want to thank you for being part of our 80th annual meeting today. And on behalf of the board of directors and the employees, I want to thank you for being Quiver River members. And thank you for all that you do to help us make this a great, a great cooperative. We just thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Doug. Very nice. All right, the next item on the agenda is the board president's report. And over the past few years, my comments have been directed at reviewing the ideals of cooperatives and their business model. So far, we've reviewed the seven guiding principles of cooperatives, the difference between a cooperative, a municipal, and an investor-owned utility, and the governance role of our board of directors. So this year, I thought I would touch upon reliability. In the annual report, reliability was listed as our top priority, and this past year, Quiver members had our power on 99.98% of the time. This does not happen without the hard work and dedication of the employees, so thank you all for that. Reliability has a more expansive meaning today than when cooperatives were first started more than 80 years ago. Throughout the decades, there's not been a time when the need for power has been greater. Today, more people are working from home, so electricity is necessary to maintain their livelihoods. And many members have medical equipment that is dependent upon reliable power to keep them healthy and safe. Hospitals, nursing homes, and other critical care and emergency facilities are equipped with generators, which buys uh, time for the linemen to repair the outages. However, not all of our individual members have this equipment, so it's vital that the electricity remain reliable. Before I was on the board, I never really thought about the reliability of power. I flipped the switch and I had power. Uh, however, there are many factors that impact the reliability uh, of electricity, and there are many levels of involvement, each doing their part to ensure that the power stays on for all of us. As cooperatives, these levels of involvement equate to our three-tiered system. If you think of a pyramid, the top triangle is the generation cooperative, the middle section is the transmission cooperative, and then the distribution cooperatives, uh, we serve all the individual members, so we follow them. There are several basic factors to consider when determining reliability. The first factor is adequate generation. Now that responsibility falls upon the generation cooperative because having adequate power is key. The transmission cooperative then gets their power from the generation cooperative. And as distribution cooperatives, we have an all power contract with the transmission cooperatives to guarantee Quiver receives all the power our members need when we need it. The second factor is the condition of the system's infrastructure. Each level of the three-tiered system must constantly maintain and replace its infrastructure to ensure that the ability to get point power from point A to point B is seamless. A few of the ways Quiver addresses infrastructure is by continually testing our meter software, our lines, our transformers, repairing and replacing poles, clearing trees and debris from around the power lines, and so on. The next factor is financial and operational performance. Quiver River is solid in both of these categories. The budgeting process and managing labor and materials have helped maintain Crex's good financial position as well as keeping rates as low as possible. Operational performance is managed daily by using sound safety practices, updating our equipment as needed, and continually training staff. The fourth factor is regulation. And even though it's not required, Quiver River does uh, keep the Public Service Commission guidelines in mind when doing business, which helps to maintain consistency and keep us competitive with other utilities. So reliability, it's a word used quite often in the power industry, but much more complex than many people realize. 
It's a topic we address in some way at every board meeting, and rest assured our Quiver River employees understand the importance of that word. They work hard every day to ensure our ability to flip the switch and have power. All right, our next item is election results. Mr. Batagular, would you like to report on that? The following results have been certified. In Lincoln County District 2, Jeff Geisendorfer received 1,171 votes, David Lightman, 397. In Warren County District 1, Dan Elliott received 1,111 votes, Jeff Culbertson, 452. In St. Charles County District 2, William Book received 226 votes, Scott Nichols, 187, Diane Solly, 1,039, Marianne Hardin, 234. In Pike County, Walt Gregory received 1,036 votes, Lori Smith received 498 votes. So uh, Jeff Geisendorfer, Dan Elliott, Diane Solly, and Walt Gregory were duly elected as directors to hold office for a term of three years until their successors shall have been elected and qualified. Thank you, Sean. Well, congratulations uh, to those who've been selected to the Board of Directors. Uh, welcome back and uh, thanks for your commitment. Uh, looking at the agenda, is there any new or unfinished business to be discussed? All right, if there is no other business to come before the membership, I'd like to thank each of you for being part of this year's annual meeting. Without objection, I now declare the 2022 annual meeting of the Quiver River Electric Cooperative adjourned. All right.